Welcome everyone to Unity Week. Uh, I will be introducing our first lecture today, uh, Learning and Teaching 500 Years of Colonialism. A little bit about myself. Um, I brought, I contacted Mexica Movement through out in where I am, just like a personal connection. Uh, I've been kind of searching my identity through like colonialism and kind of like Western so society and Western culture and navigating myself. So I kind of called uh, Mexica Movement to like bring more um, their knowledge and their, their liberation of that and more information on that. Um, but I would, uh, a little about the speaker, he is the founder and director of Mexica Movement, which teaches 500,000 years of just uh, culture here in the North America and South America, all the Americas. Um, and without further ado, I would like y'all to, I would like to introduce y'all to Olin Descatlipulca. Oh, thank you, Richie, uh, Doris Martinez, and all the other students who were involved in getting me here. Um, I take it the mic is working fine. Um, learning and teaching the truth of the last 500 years of colonialism. Introduction, a guide to rewiring the colonized mind of the Nicantlaca, the pre-1492 people of this continent. Nicantlaca means we the people of this continent, or literally, we the people here. I am a Nicantlaca man, I am a colonized man, I am a man in the process of decolonizing himself because I was born in the colonized world of my people on a continent occupied by European settlers. I am a colonized man. I am colonized because I am forced to speak a European language. I am colonized because European people still control the lands of my people. I am colonized because European settlers are stealing the wealth of my people every day. Our forests, our rivers, our mountains, our farmlands, our prairies, our deserts, our coastlines, all of our lands are being robbed of their wealth. I am a colonized man because we no longer have control over the wealth of our continent. I am colonized because I was educated through a Eurocentric education system. I am a colonized man because I am not free from Europeans anywhere on my continent. I am a Nicantlaca. I am a man in the process of waking to the truth of the last 500 years of our ongoing colonialism and to 500 years of our ongoing genocide. I am a Nicantlaca man becoming aware of the 7,000 years of civilizations and of 7,000 years of the colonized living of our people. I'm sorry, I lost. Can I just, can you check the, the cameras? I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's, so I, I'm just gonna have to restart this, because we are in. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm a little ADD and I still had the thing going on about the camera here. Um, I am a Nicantlaca man becoming aware of the 7,000 years of civilizations and the 7,000 years of scientific accomplishments of the civilizations of my people. I'm a Nicantlaca man waking to the fact that my people have been on this continent for over 50,000 years. I am aware now more than ever that this continent as a whole belongs collectively to my people. Collectively, this continent is our homeland and we have nowhere else to go in this world, on this planet. Europeans have their homeland in Europe. We have only this continent, these lands as ours. We have nowhere else to go. 
I am a Nicantlaka man. I am a descendant of people who in 1492 were in their majority living in cities and civilizations all across this continent in what is called North and South America. In our majority, we were living in cities and civilizations. This is a fact that is hard to imagine because most of us were never given the facts, the truth, the reality of these cities and civilizations, nor did we see movies showing us our huge cities and large towns that were on this continent before 1492. We have been presented to the world and to our people as a savage people with shabby huts and human sacrifice, no cities, no large towns, no accomplishments. That is not the truth of what the reality on this continent was before 1492. The lies that we have been taught are many. The truth about my people on this continent is scarce and hidden. The damage of these lies has been catastrophic to my people. These lies have lessened our humanity and left us collectively psychologically damaged as a whole, as a Nicantlaca nation, and as individuals. This has been catastrophic. Identity. Nicantlaca means we the people of this continent, or literally, we the people here in the Nahuatl language. We are Nicantlaca, not Indians. Indians are the people of a nation in Asia called India. A simple fact that refuses to be corrected from any of the history books of this nation. This is why we demand a Nicantlaca identity as a replacement for Indian. Nicantlaca means we the people of this continent. We also do not accept natives as a name for our people because that is a derogatory term, a term that Europeans never apply to themselves. Notice how we don't refer to the natives of Europe, the native people of Europe. Natives is only used for the non-Europeans, the darker people of the world, for the people who are considered a lesser people than Europeans, lesser, less human than any European anywhere in the world. It is a white supremacist notion, the natives. This is why we demand a Nicantlaca identity as a replacement for native. Exiting of the colonized mind. Remember that this is a lecture to help you rewire our colonized minds. The process is difficult. You may know some of the facts being presented here, but you may have never had them presented in a non-Eurocentric way, presented in the interest of the Nicantlaca, in the interest of the pre-1492 people of this continent, the true owners of this continent. You will find that the Eurocentric view is drastically different from the truth and the reality of the world. Truth in the world is not to be exclusively viewed through the view of European interests. In fact, it should be avoided if you want to learn the truth of how the world functions. Exiting our colonized minds is part of the rewiring of our colonized minds with truth and deletion of the lies that we have been taught all of our lives. This rewiring of our colonized minds requires that our minds be set to open mind. Our open minds will look at the world with the truth of history, facts, and logic. That open mind will more easily recognize and acknowledge the lies of the last 500 years. The hardest part of, re of this rewiring will be the emotional part, acknowledging that the immoral, unjust, and criminal actions 
were done by Europeans against our people, the Nican Flaca, over the last 500 years, it will be difficult in the world of lies to accept the hard facts, the truth. The, fr the facts presented in this lecture can be backed up with the simple use of a dictionary and with references to the books that I will be referring to and some simple use of logic and a moral compass in an open mind. Cities, civilizations, and not savages. It is the fact that the majority, the vast majority of our people on this continent actually lived in large cities and large towns. Our tribal people, the wandering tribes of our people were actually only about 10% of our population. But that 10% tribal people is what Europeans want and need and like to focus on to make it seem as if all of our people were tribal people living in huts or teepees, having no cities, no civilizations, no accomplishments. In 1492, the majority of our people were in fact living in civilizations that were older than any of the civilizations of Europe or Egypt. Our cities were larger, more hygienic, better advanced, more advanced than any of the cities of Europe in 1492. This is truth. This is a documented fact. The schools and universities that we attend today, the media and pop culture that are part of our lives have, have taught us lies about the reality of this continent before 1492. We have to unlearn, delete those lies and take on truth into our view of the Nigan Flaca world before 1492, into our view of ourselves, but we must also learn the truth about Europeans in 1492. They were not what we have been told uh, they were. Europeans in 1492 had smaller cities than we had. Europeans had a poorer economy, a less accurate calendar than we had, and lesser knowledge of astronomy and medicine than we had. Europeans had la less advances in education than we had, we had mandatory education for males and females in our larger cities. Europeans did not bathe in those days. Europeans never bathed in their whole lives in Europe. They threw their fecal and urine waste into the streets of their cities while we had public toilets and bathed daily. Imagine the true smell of Europeans in 1492. Smell that truth. Europeans were burning men and women alive, torturing and sacrificing them in the name of Jesus Christ. Over 300,000 human beings were sacrificed by the Christian church in Europe in the name of Jesus Christ. Human sacrifices were made to the three gods, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. These are the first things you need to think about in order to rethink the reality that you have accepted since you were first educated. Almost everything that we have learned about the world that existed here on this continent before 1492 is a lie. But let us focus on the most important distortion, the major lie about our people, the Nican Flaca. The idea that is a lie is that the majority of our people were wandering tribal people without cities or towns, with, and without accomplishments or civilizations, that is all a lie. The idea that our continent was almost empty of people and that our people did not believe in owning land is a lie. We have always collectively owned our land, this continent, and we acknowledge that we owned, that we are owned by the land. We respected the land. We referred to our land as a whole as our mother. No individual can sanely own land. Land is the heritage of a nation, of the people of the land. This continent is our homeland. This continent is our mother, our motherland. The idea of savages and unowned lands is a convenient lie for the thieves who stole our lands. It is a convenient lie to hide the fact that we had large cities and large towns in what is now called Mexico and Central and South America. These cities and civilizations 
were the heart of our heritage, the jewels of our continent. These cities and large towns held 90% of our population. In the larger cities, we had schools and universities with hospitals and doctors, with architects and engineers, with astronomers and mathematicians, with our own writing systems and books and libraries. We had cities that were larger than any of the cities of Europe. It seems like some science fiction story to speak of these cities, civilizations, and genius accomplishments being created by the Nikan Placa of this continent. But there is no fiction in any of these facts. The only fiction is the one that we find in the history books of our schools today. Savages arrived in boats from Europe in 1492. October 12, 1492, our people in the Caribbean could not imagine that the three ships that they first saw and the ones that came in the months and years to come would completely exterminate the population of most of the islands. Our people in the, the large cities and towns on the mainland of our continent could not even imagine the death and destruction, the devastation, the Holocaust that would destroy our world. Europeans quickly spread smallpox as a biological weapon of mass extermination on our people, a weapon that would eventually kill 100 million of our people throughout our continent making their biggest impact on our cities, large towns, and large villages where the bulk of our population resided. Eventually, Europeans would end up killing 95% of our people, killing 100 million of our people with their smallpox weapon of mass extermination. These biological warfare attacks on our people were the equivalent of using 1,000 Hiroshima-type nuclear bombs all across our continent. Hiroshima's death toll was 100,000 human lives. Think on that. Now imagine the equivalent of 1,000 of these atomic bombs going off all across our continent on our large cities, large towns, and in the thousands of large villages with the use of smallpox as a weapon of mass extermination. Now, think on the savage idea of stealing the lands of a whole race by using this biological warfare to exterminate our people, or any people. Our cities and ancient civilizations were destroyed so that Europeans could get free land and free wealth. Think of how monstrous and immoral that idea is. Europeans were willing to exterminate a whole race of human beings. They were willing to destroy seven major civilizations, the Maya, the Purepecha, Huastec, Mexica, Zapotec, Mixtec, and Inca civilizations, civilizations that went back thousands of years to their origins in the Supe Caral area of the Andes and to the Olmecs in what is now called Mexico. They also exterminated smaller civilizations and dozens of our cultures. If you do not believe the fact that this Holocaust happened on this continent or that our people were living in cities and built great civilizations, you can read American Holocaust by David Stannard, a University of Hawaii professor of history, a person of European descent. You can also read Colonizer's Model of the World by J.M. Blout, also a person of European descent. Or you can read 1491 by Charles Mann, another person of European descent. Or Year 501 by Noam Chomsky, a person of European and Jewish descent. J.M. Blout writes of this Holocaust that you never heard of. He writes, the Americas were not conquered they were infected. Europeans killed 100 million of our people. Europeans killed 95% of our population. Our people in these days, today, right now, know almost nothing of the evil that came in those early days of 1492 and of the 500 years of European invasions, holocausts, and genocide that followed. 
Our people to this day don't really understand how it is that we have been left without land or homeland, without a nation, without freedom, without warriors to defend us, and without a true independence from Europeans on our continent. The Europeans are still on our continent, still here on our lands, still stealing the wealth of our continent while our people live in poverty. Europeans have grown wealthy, more greedy, powerful, more racist from the raping of the wealth of our continent. We as a people have lost the sense of our full humanity, of our dignity, and our sense of honor because of the terrorism, genocide, and enslavement of our people, enslavement that serves the interests of enriching the Europeans on our continent, not just here in the United States of European settlers, but throughout our continent, where the Spaniard and Portuguese Europeans still control our lands. Our people have been intentionally kept ignorant of this Holocaust of our people. Even the Europeans have been intentionally kept ignorant of the true evil that their ancestors did so that they could hold lands and wealth today that, that have been stolen from our people, a people who have been almost completely exterminated. But we are still here, divided by colonial nations and their borders, dehumanized, called Native Americans, First Nation people, Indians, Mexicans, Hispanics, Latinos, Chicanos, illegals, scarred by 500 years of terrorism, rape, and poverty. We are still deprived of the wealth of our lands, our wealth, which makes Europeans wealthy and powerful in the world that we live in. The beginning of our enslavement to the Europeans began in 1492 in the Caribbean parts of our lands, and it would expand over the next 500 years to all of our lands till not one piece of our continent was free from Europeans and not one of our people could live free as a free people. Europeans destroyed 7,000 years of our civilizations and cities and histories and left us as slaves, as foreigners on our own lands. They destroyed our libraries, art, architecture, universities, and our cultures and left us without our own history and without our Nicantlaca identity and without our warriors to educate us and to protect us. They destroyed our freedoms, our humanity, our dignity, and our honor and left us to live perpetually as slaves of the Europeans. The history of the Nicantlaca before 1492 My people's history on this continent begins when we came here from Asia over 50,000 years ago. Over 50,000 years on this continent is longer than the 40,000 years that the old Celtic and Basque tribal people of Europe have been in Europe. These Europeans came out of North Central Asia and migrated into Europe. Our 50,000 years on this continent is longer than the less than 4,000 years that the Germans and Scandinavians have been in Europe, longer than the 4,000 years that the Slavic people have been in Europe. They both came from North Central Asia and migrated into Europe a mere 4,000 years ago. We have been on this continent for over 50,000 years. These simple facts, these basic facts, of our civilizations and cities, and the truth about the newness of Europeans in Europe are denied to my people, and they are denied to the Europeans in Europe and the European settlers on this continent. As you can see, my people's history is not just the last 500 years of European invasions. We are more than just the false, savage nomads created by the movies. We are more than just the massacres of our people, the thefts of our lands, the terrorizing and enslaving of our people, the genocide of our people, the dehumanization of our people all across this vast continent. 
We are a people of great accomplishments of cities and civilizations older than the cities and civilizations of Europe and Egypt. The centuries and millenniums of our genius in building cities and civilizations has been hidden and forgotten, erased from history, erased from the memories of my people. We are no longer a people of genius or accomplishments. We stopped inventing, creating, building, designing, being philosophers, poets, being a scientific people of astronomers, mathematicians, doctors, botanists, and creators of great civilizations. All of that ended with the arrival of the Europeans. We were culturally castrated and we became unable to reproduce our heritage of the genius of people that we had been before 1492. We became the slaves of the Europeans, working our own lands to enrich the Europeans as we lived in poverty and ignorance and disconnected and displaced from our proper place in the world. A world where we were a free people, free on our own land, we were never again to be a people known for inventing, creating, building, designing, being philosophers, poets, being a scientific people. We were left as ruins of a once great people. The secret of European success, smallpox as a weapon of mass extermination. Europeans portray themselves as adventurers, as explorers, as business people, discovering new lands. In 1492, in the centuries that followed, Europeans came to this continent with criminal intent, with a criminal lust for gold and free lands, gold and land, lands that were not theirs. They came to steal the gold and silver from the treasuries of our cities, and later from the mines of our lands. They eventually stole all of our wealth and all of our lands. They were, there were no free lands or free gold in Europe that they could steal without paying for it with their lives. But they felt they could come here to our, our homelands, to our continent, and they could steal everything from our people after killing our people with their smallpox biological warfare. Europeans came uninvited as trespassers, as thieves, as pirates, as rapists, as slavers, as criminals, as an immoral and savage people. They came to kill and exterminate our people, to steal our lands and the wealth of our continent. They were no more doing discovery and exploration than a burglar or a bank robber is doing discovery and exploration when they investigate their target. And then make plans and proceed to burglarize a home or rob a bank. Perhaps the biggest lie that we have been told from popular fiction, from Eurocentric history books, is that Europeans defeated us all across our continent because they had superior weapons and superior intelligence over a people who were living in the Stone Age and were total savages. What they don't tell us in schools or in the media is that Europeans defeated us solely with the use of smallpox as a biological weapon of mass extermination. Most of us had, have never heard of that. Or if we did read of it, it was explained as being accidental. Accidental on every island in the Caribbean accidental in Mexico and the Inca lands, accidental everywhere they went. Those were not accidents. That is a full-scale smallpox biological warfare assault on our people with the intent to exterminate us all. Every place they went from the Caribbean to Mexico to the Inca lands to Florida with the pilgrims with the missions in California and everywhere else that the Europeans invaded on our continent, that smallpox weapon was there to exterminate 90 to 95% of our people. And in some places, 
They exterminated 100% of our people. Europeans killed 100 million of our people all across our continent with the use of smallpox as a biological weapon of mass extermination. They almost succeeded in exterminating 100% of our people. Nothing of this use of biological warfare was accidental. Again, I refer you to the book, American Holocaust by David Stanner, written by a person of European descent to verify the facts. It was possible that this biological warfare could have exterminated 100% of our people and you would have no one to complain about our smallpox holocaust. European settlers would then say, too bad none of them survive or else we would give them back their lands. Oh well, too bad. But aren't we lucky to have all of this land and free wealth to make us the most powerful, the most wealthy nation on earth? When we speak of all of this evil done by Europeans, when we speak of this truth, these facts, it causes outrage amongst the Europeans and even amongst our own people. We get accused of spreading hate by white supremacists. When we speak of our cities and civilizations and great accomplishments and the Holocaust and genocides and stolen land and the other crimes of the Europeans, we are told by these same white supremacists to leave all of the past in the past, to move on. They say that we now live in a multicultural democratic society and we should just leave the past in the past. What they want us to do is to shut up about their crimes and how they stole our lands and how that theft keeps us poor and makes them rich. They want us to disappear. Some even say they wish they had completely exterminated our people and then there would be no one to complain. Understanding genocide. Genocide is a word that rarely gets used, but when it does get used, most people don't really understand what it means. You have to understand that it is more than just the racist killing of a people or just the ethnic cleansing of a people. In the book American Holocaust by David Stannard is a section on the definition of genocide. David Standard writes how Raphael Lemkin, after his experiences as a survivor of the Jewish Holocaust, conceived of genocide as an idea and as a word. Standard writes that Lemkin defined genocide as the planned annihilation killing of a national or racial group, such as Nigantlaka, by a variety of actions that include biological warfare, of all, all of which are aimed at undermining the foundations essential to the survival of the, of the group as a group, including displacing us from our lands, displacing us from our history, displacing us from our identity, displacing us from our status as a free people, displacing us from having our own schools and universities, and displacing us from having our own warriors to defend us, the soldiers who would defend us and our interests. All of these attacks and displacements are acts of genocide. Genocide is further defined as the coordinated and, and planned annihilation of a national or racial group by a variety of actions. Lemkin wrote that genocide is a composite of different acts of persecution or destruction. His definition included attacks on political and social institutions, culture, language, national feelings, and the economic existence of the group. Even non-lethal acts that undermine the liberty, dignity, and personal security of members of a group constituted genocide if they contributed to weakening the viability of the group. This means attacks on our existence as Nicantlaca constitutes genocide. 
This means that smallpox biological warfare and the destructions of our cultures and civilizations have been serial holocausts and serial acts of genocide. It is an act of genocide to attack our political and social institutions, our culture, our languages, our national feelings, our unity as a racial group, or to undermine the foundations essential to our economic existence as a group, as, as a nigantlaka, as a race, as a nation. The foundation of our economic existence as a group is totally based on our lands, the wealth of our lands. To deny us our rights to our lands, to our ownership of our lands, is an act of genocide. We have to understand the significance of the meaning of genocide and how it affects us today. This ongoing genocide perpetuated by Euro Europeans means to destroy us as a people, to completely exterminate us. Surviving genocide. I am a Nikantlaka man who almost never existed. I am part of the 5% of my people that survived that Holocaust that killed 95% of my people. I am part of a people who almost became extinct, a people meant to be exterminated. I am part of a nation that was attacked by Europeans using biological warfare, massacres, rapes, and every imaginable evil that the European sociopath mind could conceive. Yes, I am part of the Nikantlaka who had 95% of its population killed by Europeans. I am part of the people of this continent who had their cities and civilizations destroyed by Europeans. I am a man who almost never lived because of the Holocaust that killed 100 million of my people. I am part of a people that have been enslaved by Europeans on this continent. I am part of a nation that sees Europeans stealing the wealth of our continent every day. While my people live in poverty, in ignorance of the truth, the truth that is being told here today. We, Nikantlaka, we, the people of this continent, are the 5% of our population that survived this Holocaust. You need to understand that simple, evil, criminal, immoral fact. Colonialism, genocide, profit, and the birth of modern capitalism. The European intent was to kill 100% of our people so that they could have free land and free wealth throughout our continent. They failed at that. They missed killing that 5% of us that survived 500 years of Holocaust and genocide. The whole world knows about the Jewish Holocaust of six million killed by the Nazis, but we here on this continent know nothing of the Holocaust that killed 100 million of our people. Teaching truth in the face of lies and hidden histories of the last 500 years is difficult and may even seem impossible, but the truth can be told. But first we need to learn how we have been lied to. We are told that this continent was mostly empty, that we didn't believe in owning land, that we were total savages living in the Stone Age and without any significant accomplishments. The truth is different from these lies of small wandering tribes and empty lands. The Spaniards who invaded Mexico write of how they traveled from the coast in what is now called Veracruz up into the central part of Mexico and saw all of the land was being used for different types of agriculture. They saw five major city-states that were larger than any city in Europe. They marveled at the beauty and cleanliness of these cities and of the thousands of large and small towns they passed through. Europeans wrote of their amazement upon entering Tenochtitlan, a city larger than any city in Europe. It was the city of the Mexica, the city of the people falsely called Aztecs. In Tenochtitlan, they wrote of seeing restaurants, mandatory education for males and females, free hospitals, skilled doctors more advanced than any in Europe, 
and even public toilets, none of which existed in Europe at the time. They were especially awed by Mexica doctors and hospitals that were better than those in Europe. They wrote about the better quality of the Mexica world of medicine with pharmacies, with dentists, psychologists, and other medical specialties. They spoke of the marketplace of Tenochtitlan, which was larger than any of those of Europe. They were fascinated with the justice system that had none of the corruptions or injustices of the European legal systems. They spoke of the Mexica capital's beauty and asked themselves if they were not dreaming because they could not have imagined that such a beautiful city was even possible. We know nothing of this today. The schools of today that support colonialism and, and media that promotes continued colonialism don't tell us that there were seven cities larger than any of the cities of Europe on, in 1492. Tenochtitlan, Texcoco, Huachotzinco, Cholula, and Tlaxcala, all in what is now called Mexico. And Cusco and Cajamarca in what is now called Peru. We as Nicantlaca, as indigenous people of this continent, know nothing of this, and neither do the Europeans in the settler nations all across our continent. We are a people of ancient civilizations. Our civilizations begin with the Caral area of Peru and in the El Porvenir area around 4700 BC. That is about 7,000 years ago. The oldest civilization in Europe that Europe claims is Mycenaean civilization of 2700 BC. But that civilization is more properly part of the civilizations of the Middle East and Egypt. All of this means that our civilizations are older than any of the civilizations of Europe. Europe itself did not invent the wheel, nor did it invent agriculture or any writing system, nor did they invent any civilization. The things that we think today of as European, like the Latin writing system and accomplishments in the early sciences are all from the Middle East. Greek and Roman civilizations are direct offshoots of the Middle East. The Europeans are not truthful even about their own history. How can we expect them to be truthful about the history of their actions on this continent? We have been told that history is told by the victors. Official European history is told to protect the guilty and to preserve the profits from the crimes of colonialism. But there are many hidden sources for true history. Europeans themselves wrote of their crimes on this continent. You have Columbus himself writing about all of his crimes against our people in the Caribbean in his journal. Things like, they were well built with good bodies and handsome features. They would make fine servants. With 50 men, we can enslave them all and make them do whatever we want. You have Bartolomé de las Casas, a Catholic priest, who wrote of all of the monstrous crimes of the Europeans in his book, The Devastation of the Indies. He writes, endless testimonies prove the mild and pacific temperament of the natives, but our work was to exasperate, ravage, kill, mangle, and destroy. Small wonder then if they tried to kill one of us now and then. The Admiral Columbus, it is true, was as blind as those who came after him, and he was anxious to please the king that he committed irreparable crimes against the Indians. But even the official conquerors, the pirates, thieves, savages, who came after Columbus wrote of their crimes in their journals and letters without even blushing at the massacres, deceit, theft, rapes, mutilation, kidnappings, extortions, and enslaving that they did on this continent. There is no scarcity of documentation of the evil that Europeans have done against our people but there is a continued profit 
that has European settlers on this continent sitting in power, sitting silent on injustice, sitting silent on the ongoing genocide of our people. Cultural castration. Over the last 30 years, we have had a tightening of the colonial chains with the imposition of the false Hispanic and Latino labels. These false European labels on our people are intentionally meant to confuse us and to rob us of our true Nicantlaca identity and heritage and to rob us of our birthright to our collective ownership of this continent. It is an attempt to erase our Nicantlaca heritage and identity. In the first 100 years, the Spanish Europeans on our continent did everything they could to exterminate 100%, to exterminate us off of the, the face of our continent. Yet, they still needed slaves to do all of the hard work which they were unwilling to do themselves. During those first 100 years, they made slaves of all Nicantlaca that had survived our smallpox warfare. On slave holdings, they forced their Christian, Christianity on our people. They forced their Spanish names on us. We were the Indians on farms, mines, plantations, owned by Spaniards named Gonzalez, Garcia, Fernandez, Martinez, and other Spanish names. These were the slave names we were given. This is much like the African slaves who now carry names like Jackson, Jones, Jefferson, and all of the rest, European names, not our names. On those farms, mines, and plantations, our women were raped, and our men were humiliated and dehumanized as slaves of Europeans. For 500 years, Europeans have attempted to exterminate us from the face of the earth. They have done it with massacres, executions, torture, terrorism, and most effectively with biological warfare. But still, about 5% of us survived. But that enslaved 5% of us that survived and that they raped and culturally castrated. We could no longer be capable of having our own warriors so that we would have no history, no pride, no thought of rebelling, rebelling against our masters. Let me repeat that last part. They enslaved us, raped us, and culturally castrated us so that we would no longer be capable of having our own warriors, so that we would have no history, no pride, no thought of rebelling against our masters. We were culturally castrated by prohibiting us knowledge of our history, by prohibiting us our own schools, by denying us the right to our lands by denying us the right to travel our own lands, by prohibiting our warrior societies from existing. That is how you culturally castrate a whole race of people. Those are acts of genocide. Knowledge, rebellion, and liberation. This lecture is a rebellion against our European masters, against the genocide of our people, and against the continued theft of the wealth of our continent by the European settlers. They only acquired our lands by theft, violence, deceit, immorality, genocide, and biological warfare. That is all evil and immoral. Once we, the Nicantlaca, have access to truth, we will get access to waking and anger to this truth, access to our full humanity, with knowledge of our civilizations and cities and accomplishments, then we can end the ignorance that is a plague upon our people with drugs, gangs, crime, and the self-hate that is promoted by the Eurocentric schools and media. Once we wake to truth, we will know, I'm sorry, we will no longer be ignorant of the destructive and exterminating goals of the European assimilation process and its end goal of extermination by assimilation. Once we have been 100% exterminated as Nicantlaca, there will be no more Nicantlaca. There will be, there will no longer be any legal or moral 
or historical claim of ownership by our people, by our people as Nicantlaca, since there will be no Nicantlaca. Ignorance has kept us unaware of the genocidal horror being committed against us. Ignorance has also kept us from the great history of accomplishments of our Nicantlaca civilizations. Ignorance has kept us from being thinkers, thinkers evaluating the colonized condition of our people, thinkers aware of the genocide that is going on against our people. Our great history of accomplishments and our land should be our pride, but we have been denied that pride and our land and its wealth. Once we learn this great history of our people, we will again, we will regain our true pride. Once we know of the full meaning of the crimes of the Europeans, we will know that we have only one option. We have to take back our history, our Nicantlaca identity, and our human right to our land and its wealth. We are ignorant of the fact that we have, we have the option of having a great future for our people without Europeans in our lives or on our continent. That is a scary th thought, a horrifying thought for Europeans on our continent, the fact that we would even think of that. But that is also a scary thought for our own people. We have the right to be a free people free from Europeans on our own lands. We have the right to demand the return of our lands and not in some token pieces of land. But first we must speak with knowledge, with truth, with courage. For us to refuse to be a free people because we fear Europeans and accept our continued enslavement to Europeans, leaving us as tenants on our own lands, that would say that we are cowards and that we are lesser human beings, that Europeans have destroyed our humanity. The moral question. We have been told by Europeans and the European settlers that Jews have the right to take back their lands, lands that were stolen from them 2,000 years ago. Well, some of our lands were only stolen from us 200 years ago. And the rest were stolen from us only within the last 500 years. Are we lesser human beings? Not entitled to our lands? 500 years is a way lesser time than 2,000 years that Jews were robbed of their lands. Are we not equal in some measure of human rights to the Jew? Equal as human beings to the Jew? Are we not entitled to the full weight of justice to the might of the people of the world to help us in demanding that Europeans return our lands to us and that they stop stealing the wealth of our continent? Today it seems unimaginable to us that we could ever be without Europeans controlling our lives or our land. They have made it seem impossible for us to ever be free from their control of our lands or our lives. Europeans and their descendants have tortured that false idea of European undefeatable superiority and hopeless inferiority for us. They have pounded and def this defeatist and cowardly mentality into our blood, flesh, breath, and heart for over 500 years. But for those of us who study our ancestors, we know that we have to be free from Europeans. We can imagine total liberation. We know that it is possible and that it is an absolute necessity to be free from Europeans. We of the Mexica movement are now working for a peaceful, violence-free education path to total liberation. We know that the process of gaining liberation requires an obligation to know our history. It also requires that we regain our honor and our land. We can gain all of the necessary knowledge that will liberate us when we seriously, positively, and constructively study our history without Eurocentric interpretations.
In that study, we can find the beauty of who we are as a people and the barbaric crimes of the Europeans if we open up our eyes to the reality of our enslavement to the Europeans of Europe and the Europeans on our continent. These semi-independent Europeans on our lands call themselves Americans, Cubans of Miami, and the Criollos of Mexico and Central and South America. They are, in fact, colonialists. They are colonizers. We have to see the absolute need to be free from these colonizers and their control of our lives and their control of our continent. Yes, it is still our land, no matter what the European settlers say. We just have to find the courage to tell them that this is our land and that all of the wealth of our land belongs collectively to us. If we do not say this, we are in fact saying that we approve of our slavery and the theft of our wealth and lands. And what does that say of us? It says that we are cowards and fools, perpetual slaves of the Europeans. All of our people have to see that the only honorable choice for us is to regain our heritage and our lands and to be liberated. When we wake up to the reality understanding of all of this, we will see that we have fraudulently and perversely been taught to identify with the interests and desires of the Europeans and their history, their religion, their destiny, and their future profit and progress from our lands while we live in poverty. The wealth of our lands and our slave wage labor are what has made Europeans wealthy all over this planet for the last 500 years. This theft of our wealth and the genocide of our people has been done by people who now call themselves white, Europeans, Americans, Anglo-Saxon, and descendants of Spaniards and Portuguese. None of the European settlers on our continent would have the have the wealth they have today if their ancestors had not stolen our land, had not killed 95% of our people, killed 100 million of our people, and made slaves of the 5% of our population who survived the smallpox holocaust and the genocide of 500 years of terrorism, slavery, and evil acts of colonialism and genocide. The end of the Nicantlaca, or the beginning, of liberation. In order to accomplish their goals of exterminating our people, they have taught us to fraudulently call ourselves mestizo and half-breeds, raza or mestizo and Latino or American, and to pretend some false weak blood historical ties to Europe or to the Spaniards. But if we honestly look in the mirror, our families, our history, and our people as a whole, we will see the truth of who we are, Nicantlaca, the full blood and the mixed blood, the light and dark skinned. We are all the scarred survivors of a Holocaust. Many of our people now dye their hair, bleach their skin. They do this to hide their Nicantlaca features. They do this to bring out what supposedly is the true European blood in them. This is so sad and shameful. Europeans laugh at our people when we do this. We should also be laughing at our people when they do this, but we don't. This lecture is not about hating Europeans or us, Nicantlaca. For us, Nicantlaca, it is about loving our own heritage and our own people. For European descent people, this should be an earthquake of truth that will have them questioning how Europeans gained so much wealth and so much power. This is not about hate, this is about truth. It is about understanding the truth about our current enslavement to Europeans, an enslavement which is made to look harmless because of the ignorance of all of this truth and the poverty that keeps us as non-thinkers. Would Europeans like to have all of their land stolen in Europe by the Chinese? and have 95% of their population exterminated? Would they like all of the wealth of their continent stolen from them by the Chinese and to have the Chinese occupy their lands? Would they like to be culturally castrated, to hate themselves and to love the Chinese people and culture more than their own? 
Would they like to live forever as, as a slave nation of the Chinese people? The situation would become different if it is happening to them. They would not tolerate such a situation, but we are supposed to not just tolerate it. We are taught to love it and to love assimilation and genocide. We can be a free people once again, once our humanity is respected, once our human rights to our continent are respected, once Europeans recover their moral compass. Yes, with this knowledge, we want to teach Nicantlaca to love our heritage, our people. We also want to teach European colonialists to free themselves from being oppressors, racists, and thieves of our lands, thieves of the wealth, and thieves of our humanity. We will need Europeans of true moral and ethical values to have all of this knowledge in our people's interests and the courage to defend our interests in order to undo 500 years of Holocaust and genocide. This lecture should help with the rewiring of the colonized minds of the Nigantlaka in reconnecting with our true Nigantlaka heritage, heritage that is without colonial borders on our continent, without the false Hispanic Latino labels, without the ignorance that has impoverished our lives for 500 years. This collection of truth will be difficult to digest intellectually, emotionally, but the killing of 100 million of our people with smallpox, biological weapons, the extermination of 95% of our people, the theft of 100% of our lands is no small thing. Not a truth that should be forever hidden. In 50 years or 100 years, when we will be the majority in the United States and the majority on this continent, Europeans will have to return to us the whole of our continent to be collectively owned by the Nicantlaca people. That will be the right thing to do, the moral thing to do, the golden rule thing to do, to, undo, to do unto others as you would have done unto you. The golden rule is not a Judeo-Christian ethic. It is a universal concept of altruism, idealism, morality, and civilized conduct. Europeans knew the golden rule. Had Europeans behaved in this civilized manner when they first landed on our continent, we would still have our cities and civilizations and our vast population on this continent. Let us hope that the future is ruled by the golden rule, not by colonialism, white supremacy, or genocide. Thank you very much for listening to the Nicantlaca voice that is not heard. All right, everyone. Um, first and foremost, can y'all give it up again for Olin? We do have some time for questions. So if you do have, oh, we'll see. Yeah, we can find you. Oh, awesome. Oh. So if you do have questions, we do have two microphones over here, one on each side. Um, we would appreciate if you did use a mic. We're recording. Yeah, if you could walk up up there, that'd be great. Oh, yeah, yeah. sorry. I Okay, I take it you can hear me. All right, make sure you're not blocking that one. Uh, huh? Uh, on me, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for being here. My name is Teresa. I learned today, and I am really sad to say that I am Garcia. I would like to have any other Mexica names. I am from Mexico City. I believe that I am really Mexican people. I love to say, when you said that I am a full blood Mexica, thank you because I learned something very important for me today. 
I would like to, to know more about Bartolomé de las Casas. You mentioned that he was a Christian, but, uh, but it was not clear for me if he helped our people or if he contributed to kill our heritage and human beings, please. Okay, well first, I, I didn't say I was full blood. We as a people, as Nicantlaca, we're full bloods and mixed blood. I myself am mixed blood. Just like I say, um, uh, the Jews. Jews are the biggest mixed bloods in the world, right? And so they, you can have a black Ethiopian Jew and you can have a Nordic looking Jew and they're Jews. Yeah, and that's really the, the idea with us because we do have mixed bloods and that's part of what's, what makes people confused. Okay, I just want to correct that part. And I'm sorry, the second part of your question was about Bartolomeo Bartolome de, la, de las Casas. Uh, he's a complicated man. Um, he was a man actually that participated in a lot of the crimes himself before he became a priest. That's why he knows so well the crimes of the Spaniards. Um, and and he did actually defend our people because basically we, we were, the population was going 90%, 80%, you know, down to about 10%. And he was saying, we're going to exterminate these people. We can't keep doing what we're doing. Um, and so he documented uh, uh, all, all of the crimes, basically. But he also talks about the, the cities that were there and uh, the, the accomplishments and things like that. But kind of where he started out bad, he did some good, but then his solution to the total extermination of our people was, he said, stop enslaving, because that's the other thing people don't understand. The people of Mexico, C Central America, and South America, the Nican Flaca, we were actually slaves. That's a, a part, we, we never think of ourselves. That's how we became Garcias and Martinez's and all that, and we never even think about that. Um, but his solution, De Las Casas' solution to making sure that we weren't 100% exterminated was, he said, bring in Africans. And that was the beginning of bringing Africans as slaves into the Western Hemisphere. So, see how it's complicated? Yeah. So, a lot of people like to you know, put De Las Casas as some sort of saint. I say, well, maybe I'll, I'll accept he was a human being who... Who, who did bad, tried to correct it, but then he did some more bad. Um, but he is uh, actually uh, one of the people that was debating in Europe whether we were even human beings. There was an actual debate. They had actually passed a law that said they are human beings. He, so, okay. Anybody else with a question? I know I covered a lot of different... Uh, territory and some of this may be new to you. Um, I think uh, for, for the people of African descent here, I'd say you could probably relate some of, some of uh, that uh, to yourselves because it, it happened in a similar way to, to people of African descent. Um, but it, it's, it's a very difficult subject, subjects to talk about since the majority of people how many of you in, in the audience uh, had never heard of most of what I spoke about, just as a curiosity? Okay. All right. Um, so you could have left, lived the rest of your lives and you wouldn't have known this truth. And that's why in the lecture I'm saying, you don't believe me? This crazy man is up there saying some stuff about cities and holocaust and smallpox weapons and, and all that. It's, it's documented. Um, the one that for me was really shocking was the, the whole idea that Europeans were using smallpox as a biological weapon. Um, the thing is, they didn't really start using it with us. There, is, there are some islands off the coast of Africa called the Canary Islands. And the Canary Islands were invaded by the Europeans in the, in the 1400s. And when they, when they went in there, they discovered something very interesting. That the people that they had that had been exposed to uh, smallpox, if they made contact with the people on the Canary Islands, they, they, they contracted the disease and within a certain amount of time that whole little village was basically dead. Resistance uh, uh, in areas that had not been exposed to smallpox, um, uh, 
proved to be fatal. Europeans, could, again, there were some people that would die in Europe, uh, maybe about 5, 10% would survive smallpox, but they would be carriers. Um, and, uh, but let me finish off with the, the Canary Islands. So within 100 years of contact by the Europeans, there were no Canary Islanders left. To this day, there are no Canary Islanders. There are people that call themselves Canary Islanders, you know. Um, but it's just like people today that call themselves Jamaicans. You know, actually, there are no Jamaicans. That's a pretty huge island. There are no Jamaicans left. There are only African people that were brought into Jamaica. But what happened to the original people of the island? And it didn't finish with, with uh, the Canary Islands. It didn't finish with us. They went into other areas where th there was really no immunity to smallpox, like the Polynesian Islands, Australia, and even South Africa. Ever wonder why the Europeans made that area a first place of contact? Because it was the first place of contact on the African continent that they found that had no immunity to smallpox. So they went in there and just spread it. So everywhere on this planet that they could do it, they probably would have done it to China and India. Imagine India and China, that would have meant really great, great lands for the Europeans, right? except that China and India both had uh, Im uh, immunity to uh, smallpox. So that kind of uh, gets into the thing, oh, but they, they didn't know it was accidental. I, I use the example of um, you have a traveling salesman, and he travels to 47 cities uh, in 47 days. And there are 47 murders in those 47 cities in the motel that he stayed at using a knife. Is it coincidental or at one point he must have killed at least one of these women in these motels? And that's what you have. You have the circumstantial evidence. You can't just keep doing it, keep doing it and say, oops, 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 oops. You know, at one point, well, first of all, you have to be a moral person to say, wow, we can't keep doing this because uh, we're exposing them to smallpox and they're dying. We're, we're Christian people, we're moral people, we shouldn't be doing that. That's not really the voice, no. So that, that for me was one of the things that was very difficult. Emotionally, said, well, 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 Europeans are our fellow human beings. How, how could they do this? They're civilized, they're Christian, but they made a great profit from that. They made a killing. Hi, my name is Dulce. Uh, thank you for being here, first off. Um, I grew up very uh, influenced on American culture, but m a little bit on like Mexican American culture. And my, my family is very Catholic, but I don't know really how to start that conversation of them understanding their, why they are Catholic and not ever questioning it in life and generations after generations. So I want to have that conversation with them. But I'm not really sure how to start it. It's a very difficult conversation. I'm a product of parochial schools, from grammar school through high school. So I had the nuns, and I had the, the priests and brothers. And I was a pretty fanatical Catholic, actually, at one point. But I was a very curious kid, and I want to know more. I actually read the Bible. And I was honest enough to say, a lot of this doesn't make any sense, especially the Old Testament and reading Deuteronomy and and even reading Genesis. And I would ask, and of course the answer is always, well, these are some of the mysteries. You know? um, but I kept reading, and I finally got to a place where I started to question Christianity overall. And at one point, I, it became a, a connection to the history of Europeans and Christians here on this continent. And Christianity was put on our people at the at the point of a, of a sword, at the, at the point of a gun. Uh, this idea that we were converted, we, we were not, we were, they were forced conversions, much like Muslims. You know, they, they were mostly uh, forced conversions. Now the conversation, okay. The conversation for years, I would say, 
You know what, let's not bring up this conversation because it's a very emotional conversation. Um, as I, having been a fanatical Catholic myself, um, I know that if you came at me when I was 15 years old and you speak in any way against the church, I would have stopped listening to you. I would just attack you for attacking the church. But what is the attack to talk truth? You know? And um, one of the things that I've learned, um, I used to say, let's not get into the conversation, but I, I said, you know what? For our people who are intelligent and truthful and logical, uh, if you get into the conversation, uh, you kind of do have to start with Christianity itself. It is a belief system, right? Uh, like any other religion. So there is no proof for any of it. Uh, just like the, the dollar bill that we have. You, you know it's really backed by nothing. It's just a green piece of paper. But the fact that we all believe in it, mm -hmm. it has value. Right. It's just like the idea of spirituality. When people say, I'm a very spiritual person. Uh, or there's, there's, I feel a spirit. That's closer to reality, because really what they're talking about is when they say, I'm very spiritual, they say, I'm very emotional. It's really what they're saying. They say, a school spirit, what are you talking about? Well, the emotion that, that comes up, right? Mm -hmm. So at one point, you start questioning the words. So you start questioning Christianity, and uh, it's a story about a, a, a man uh, born of a virgin, and and uh, he's crucified as a sacrifice to himself, and blah, blah, blah. And at one point, he said, wait, 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 let's hold on, on the logic of all this. But you can't have this conversation with your parents, probably. Because, one, that's the only set of parents that you have. Most of us only get one, one set of parents. And if you get them upset and they say, Mija, I don't want to see you ever again. You're, you're just an evil person because you're questioning Christianity. He can get to that point. So maybe the parents is not really the discussion uh, where that should take place. I think it should start with yourself. The, the question, well, why do I believe this? What, what was here before 1492? Because this is the other thing people will say, well, okay, I, I, I forget Catholicism and Christianity or Protestants and all of that. You know, I want our religion. But they have no idea what, what our religion was here before. They think, oh, well, that was about human sacrifice and gods. It wasn't that either. It's a, it, I'm going to get into that one because that's a very complicated subject. Um, so the, the problem is people are looking for easy solutions. And there are no easy solutions. I, I touched only a little bit on the history of our people before 1492. It's a very complicated, it's a very complicated history. And it's a history that, that uh, people want told in two sentences, or can you tell it to me like in five minutes? You know, and uh, so getting back, back to finishing off the part about having that conversation, um, before you get to that, you need to educate yourself. You know, you, you, sadly, you do need to study a little bit more about Christianity beyond the superficial that we've been taught. Even though I went to parochial schools and we had religion class uh, every day, you know, and uh, May, I still remember every day the mass and all of this back when we had the Latin mass and all this. Um, so it's become kind of part of our culture. You know, in our communities, we have cultural centers. Do you know we have cultural centers? In every community, it's called the church. And that church is enforcing colonialism and it is enforcing genocide. Yet, we don't have any real cultural centers that, that teach us our heritage before 1492 or that even teach us of all of these crimes that were committed against us. Do you have any of those here in Seattle? We have, uh, I, I come from Los Angeles, and in Los Angeles, which has the largest 
concentration of Nikan Thwaka, of indigenous people in the United States, and we do not have one cultural center. You know how many Jewish cultural centers there are? Yeah, you already know the answer to that one. Again, because they have a strong sense of who they are. You know? uh, but with us, we, we don't have that. They have the Bible as kind of like a guide to their culture. And people say, oh, it's because they're, they're very religious people. Well, I, I work with a lot of Jews, and there are atheist Jews. So it's not strictly a religious thing. It's an ethnic uh, identity. Like uh, I remember somebody was questioning this Jewish guy. I uh, said, what, you don't go to temple? Then how can you call yourself a Jew? What am I going to do, call myself Chinese? You know, it, it, there's a lot, of, a lot of complexities in the issues of identity. And with us, since we have no cultural centers, we don't have our equivalent of priests to be teaching us, we don't have any of that infrastructure that will promote our culture. If anything, there's an infrastructure that promotes the destruction of us as a people. And one of the main means, modes of destruction of our people is Christianity. I don't know if I fully answered your question, but... No, that was a good starting point. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, folks, it's actually 1030, so we're going to wrap it up again. Thank you, Olin, from Mexica Movement.